lift your hands up over your head tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of God that we already feel in the house right now. Every, every chain is going to be broken. Every burden is going to be lifted. Every obstacle is going to be removed. Every closed door by the enemy's hand is going to be swung open wide. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Put your hand together and give him a good and mighty praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you brought your Bible, let's get right to it. First Timothy chapter, <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Y'all ready for this weekend? Big work day this weekend. We need everybody and their brother to be here. And sister and kids and grandparents. Everybody, just bring them all. Going to have a big, big day. I want to encourage you, if you can come out, please do. Got a lot. We have so much more to get done. Um, uh, we're going to just make this house look great. Inside and out, a lot going on, but it's going to be awesome. We love God, amen. And if you love, you ought to keep his house looking good. Isn't that right? People ought not drive up and go, man, they need to do something here. This place is falling down. They ought to come up and go, wow, it's too lavish. It's too awesome. They, they, let, them, let them say ugly things about how well it looks instead of the other way. Amen? Amen. And so 8 o'clock, I, I have heard a rumor. For those of you that might still be on the fence, for those of you that might be carnally minded, there is going to be Krispy Kreme donuts available, but it's on a first come, first served basis, so you'll have to get here early. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. We should have left it in the spirit realm. All right. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Say thank you, Lord. Now, whatever you'd have us to hear from you tonight, God, we want to hear every bit of it. I pray that you would open the ears of the men and women under the sound of my voice, that the revelation of your word by the Spirit would be rhema even now into their heart, even into their mind. In Jesus' name, let it produce tonight a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 fold. We come against every distracting tactic of the devil to try to steal the seed, rob the seed, distort the seed. And we ask in Jesus' name that it produce a harvest in this hour, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And everybody agreed saying amen. Give him a good and mighty praise and you can be seated tonight. Hallelujah. I want to uh, just very briefly just make mention that um, for those of you that know her, uh, Miss, M Miss Mickey, that's the, the miniature human that sits back here about four rows back. Um, she, uh, her husband had a cardiac event night before la or last night. I had to take her to the ER, but uh, we were praying for that. But uh, he, uh, he pulled through and he's stable this morning. We thank God for that. But I want you to remember him. His name is Cliff. You don't see him that often. He's pretty much homebound, but um, she, she has help come in and she's able to come here. She loves our church. She's part of our church family. And um, we're just super excited that she is so committed and faithful. And uh, just we're just praying strength on her house. Amen. Strength for her life that she'd be able to, 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 to carry whatever she has to carry. And complete and total restoration of his heart in Jesus' name. And everybody said, <clears throat> amen. Amen. And so um, just wanted to make quick quick mention of that. That's why she's not here that's why she's not here tonight. I've been just preaching to you for the past uh, few weeks on, um, on, this, on this scripture. Put it back up there for me, um, if, you, if you don't mind, please. Um, be an example. Be an example. Uh, what, would, what would the Lord have you to do? Be an example. How does he want you to live? As an example. Um, if people had no, if other people, unsaved people, saved people, other church folks had no other, no other example but you, it should be a great example. Say amen to that. 
And so when we make a decision, when we make a decision to do something, we ought to see it through. Isn't that right? We, even if it's, even there's some opposition, see it through. Um, what, what are you going to do when opposition comes? And I want to tell you this. Go ahead and make a decision and you'll find this out. Make a decision that you're going to stand in faith and believe God for something and watch if everything that can possibly be thrown at you will get thrown at you. I'm going to tell you this is how the devil operates. He operates in the physical sense realm. He will speak to you about what you see, right? He talks to you about what you hear, right? He talks to you about what you feel. Feelings cannot be what guide us and rule us. And we do not yield to our feelings. We only yield to the word. We only follow the word. The word of God is the final authority, not what you're feeling. We, I saw a bumper sticker say, do what makes you happy. Don't do that. You'll get in trouble. Amen. You do what makes you happy, 100% guarantee tomorrow you're going to have regret. Because sometimes it will make you happy to snatch somebody up and and then tomorrow when you wake up in jail waiting on bail, you know, it's nobody's there coming to your rescue. So you don't do that. You don't do what you feel. You do what the word operate in example, in word, in conversation, in charity, spirit, faith, spirit. Don't say what everybody else is saying. I'm going to tell you, we, the, one of the most difficult things that I have had to deal with in my life, in my walk with the Lord, and as I've learned anything that I've, and there's so much more I'm learning every day, but what I have learned about faith is this. The people in my own family will not agree with me. Not here on the front row. She'll agree. She's very agreeable. I'm not talking about her. But you start talking about God is going to heal me of this. Or you start talking about we're believing God for this breakthrough. Or you start talking about we're going to believe God for this house. And you will find that the people in your own family are the first ones to say, you know what, you don't need that place. You don't, you know what, just, just go to the doctor and whatever. Just, you know, they'll tell you every carnal avenue out of the will of God. I'm telling you, I'm not against doctor, but I am I'm against having my leg cut off if God's got a better way. I, I don't know about you, but I think I, I would rather be touched by the hand of God and not have to be on medicine the rest of my life. If there's a way, amen, and it's his will, amen. That's what I'm looking for. But we see things, and I'm going to tell you, it's, there's well many people. I was brought up in a, and I don't, this is not being ugly or critical, uh, and I'm not uh, attacking anything, but I'm just saying I was brought up in a, in a denominational church. And in this denominational mainline church, and, and, and I, I, I'm just telling you, doubt was sowed as much as the word was sowed. You, oh, we believe that God can do this. I don't. I can't find a believer anywhere in any church in any movement that can't that won't believe God can do something. God, I believe God can do it. Do you believe He will do it? Well, if it's His will, and they don't know His will, but His word is His will, isn't it? So if we're going to know His will, we got to know His word, and we have to be an example in how we how we operate in that. And that's the hard that's the hardest thing. So when I ask you tonight to answer this question, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when your own family says there's something wrong with you? What are you going to do when your own family says you're, you're in error? Mark eleven twenty four. 24, what things serve you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them and what you'll... Is that right? Eleven twenty three. We are going to believe God and they stand in opposition to your belief. They stand in resistance to what you're confessing. They're looking for a way to sow doubt where you're trying to find a way to plant seed of faith. Has anybody found that to be the case at your house? We're believing for, we're believing for a bigger house. We're told you need to be satisfied with your own house, the house you have. We were told it couldn't be that way. They were told it's too much. Stretching out to, oh, I want a bigger house. I got a bigger family. I need a bigger house. And they tell you, just, just find a way to make it work in the smaller place. Then we find the house, right? 
We said, this is the house. Is the air condition off? Turn it on. I see sweat here on the front row and I don't want any trouble tonight. I'm telling you. There is a, there, they, we, we found opposition. We got, we found the house. We put the offer on the house. We, the house came back the wrong, the, the, the value of the house. Uh, what do you call those? The, the estimate of the, the appraisal of the house came back and the whole deal was falling apart. We were in shock. We believe this was, she, when we left that house, look at that, she goes, I want this house. I said, then let's get this house. She said, really? I said, really, let's get this house. And it looked like the whole thing was falling apart. We got the call. I called the man that owned the house. I said, listen, we can work something out. He goes, nope, not going to do that. I said, okay. We went back to the house, which was not our house because we had already sold our house and we were living in the church parsonage, which was one third the size of our other house. And we were in there and we, it's just like, what are we doing? What happened here? Right? And people, you know, they're just telling you, well, you know, you probably shouldn't have jumped so fast. You probably said, and we're just praying. No, what happened? We thought this was the thing. We, Lord, I don't understand. But I was at the church one night because I was on the church property and it's, I had to have some breathing room. So I got out of the house and went to the church. It was bigger. And went into the room and just praying in there. And I said, Lord, whatever it is, I trust that you're going to be with us. I know what it looks like, but you know we can't live here because one of us is going to die. And we, we need to find a place that will accommodate our family. And the next day, I get a call from the man that owned the house. And he said, hey, we just wanted to let you know that if you're still interested in the house, we're going to let it go for the appraisal that it came in. We saved like 30 something thousand dollars off the, and this was in 1997. We saved like $30,000 just because there was a pause. I want to tell you something. Don't give up on what you're believing for. When the Lord speaks the word to you, somebody say yes to that. Then you hear the word. Say, I, when you hear the word, amen. Then you don't, it doesn't matter what you see on the horizon. It doesn't matter what you hear. He is going to bring it to pass. Remain in the place that you have been called. And I want you to hear this tonight. Whatever he's called you to do, stay in that calling. Say amen to that. Don't, don't draw back. Don't draw back. Stay in faith. There's a lot of contradictions that are coming. When you begin to believe God for health, I'll tell you, they'll tell you everything that you have to do except believe God for health. I want to declare to you that he built us. He knows how to keep us in good work and order. Say amen. You got to do what he said, but he'll keep you in good work and order. Say amen to that. Now go to Hebrews chapter six very quickly. Hebrews chapter six, very, very quickly, verse 12, in order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritual sluggards, but imitators. Now, who are we supposed to be imitating? We're not supposed to be imitating doubters. We're not supposed to be imitating spiritually lazy people. Can I tell y'all that we gotta be careful not to allow spiritual sluggard, the spirit of sluggery to get on us. I want to tell you, we ought to be hungry for more of God tomorrow than we were today. And then on Friday, be more hungry for God than we were tomorrow. I'm telling you, we ought to be so hungry that every day we wake up and we're asking God, feed me with the bread of life, cover me over from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet with the oil of joy and pour out a river of refreshing and life into my life. Every day our hunger should increase. Say amen. Yeah. So increase me, huh? increase my hunger. I don't want to develop that attitude of the lazy. We are surrounded in the world, in our nation, in the world by lazy people. By lazy people. I was talking with a man, I was at the store the other day, we were trying to buy some stuff and you know, they were looking for help. I said, hey, is, do we get single? And the man that was there, he said, he said, well, it's a good company to work for. They pay good, and, 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 and I like it here. He said, but you can't get people to work. 
You cannot get people to work. Now he's saying that, and they're actually paying people to come to work. And I said, well, what, what is the, what seems to be the problem? He said, they work for about two weeks and they find out it's actually work and then they quit. Can I tell you that that happens in the church as well? Can I tell you people, they get so excited when the Lord touches their life. Oh, when he touches their heart, they lifts that burden of sin. Man, they just, tears of joy and, and, and relief and, 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 and a thankfulness just overwhelm them. But it's not very long after that. If they don't stay after it, if they don't stay hungry, they fall right back into a pattern of laziness. Missing church when it's inconvenient. Not, not, not reading their Bible, not coming to prayer meeting, not, not pursuing the call of God for their life. They get spiritually lazy. And then things begin to go the other way. Jesus said, he that puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Now don't look around, but I'm going to tell you, We've probably at some time or another all been guilty of being frustrated and given up for a minute or two. And that's probably, you know, that, I'm just going to talk about me. Let me just say, there's been times when I tried to start something and seemed like everything just went against it and no one wanted to help me. And I said, you know what, if they don't want it, then I don't need it. Let them have And, you know, immediately, immediately the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes and says, what are you doing? Are you dependent on a man or a woman or a person to do the thing that I've empowered you to do? I've got to tell you, there is no one that's going to carry you across the finish line of this thing called the walk and the run and the race with the Lord. You're going to have to run your own race. Say amen to that. Lift your hand if you realize you're the only one in control of your pathway. I want you to understand, though, the lazy will not cross the finish line, but those who are purpose-driven, those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are pursuing the call of God, those who have decided they're going to run the race that's set before them. Man, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. Say amen. amen. It's not for the lazy. It's not for the weak. It's not for the easily discouraged. Go to Romans chapter five. I want to tell you when you decide to believe God, when you decide to move into the, into the next level, here's where, here's where the devil really begins to put the screws on you with tribulation by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of the Lord. Uh, and the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Now I'm going to say something here. It's not really um, <clears throat> going to be popular with everybody, but you know, I got to tell you something from experience. When you ask the Lord for patience, brace yourself. In fact, I want to encourage you not to ask the Lord for patience. Because if you ask the Lord for patience, tribulation is going to help you develop that patience. And if you're like me and you don't really care for tribulation that much, don't ask for patience. Ask for mercy. <laughs> ask for grace. But don't ask for patience because there is something attached to that. Tribulation is no fun. Tribulation isn't just seven years in the future sometime. Tribu there are tribulation right now. There are trials right now. There is resistance right now. Go ahead and resist the devil without being submitted to God and find out. Come on. Right. Tribulation is in the world. Resistance is in the world. You want joy? Be prepared for every devil in a 30 mile radius to try to steal the seed of your joy. What, what are you more attached to than the things of heaven? He wants to touch, if, listen, if it's your children, he'll try to attach himself to your children. If it, is a, if it is your career, he'll try to attach it to your career. If it's your business, he'll try to attach a, and attack your business. You must be careful not to begin to agree with him because you're spiritually tired. 
When you're getting tired and you see these attacks come, you, if you're not careful, you'll become so spiritually lazy, you'll begin to agree with what you see. Can I remind you this morning that we are, or this evening that we are in Christ? How many of you understand what that means? That if we are in Christ, that we get everything that he's already got for us. Amen. If he is in us, then he is going to empower us to do everything that he can already do. And can I remind you this, this evening of, of this very important thing? That there is no devil in heaven or earth that can stand against the king of glory. And there is no devil in heaven or earth that is giving Jesus a hard time. I want to tell you, when we begin to agree with what we see, and we begin to agree with what we hear, and we begin to agree with what the enemy's camp is trying to manifest, we entrap and ensnare ourselves, and we become defeated before we're ever in the battle. I want you to remind you this evening of this important thing. We are more than conquerors already through him that loved us. Therefore, because he's already won the battle, we walk in the victory. Because he's already overcome the devil, we walk as an overcomer. Because he's already walked into the place of blessing and prosperity, he's already made the way for us. Amen. Amen. So what are you going to do? I said, Lord, what are we missing? Where is it? Where, where are we missing? What's, the, what's, the, what's one thing that we're missing right now? Be careful what you agree with. Anything that comes against you and you agree with it will defeat you. Anything that comes against you and you agree with it will defeat you. And I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of the devil bringing the same things around every six, eight months, two, three years, and having to deal with the same thing. I am making my mind up tonight. I will not agree with anything that he says. I'm not going to agree with anything that he does. We're going to walk in a place of superabundance. We're going to walk in a place of supernatural health. We're going to walk in a place of supernatural victory. This is going to be a church where divorce does not exist. This is going to be a church where cancer does not exist. This is going to be a church where health is supernaturally manifested. Somebody say amen with me and let's agree for the supernatural to replace what we see in the natural, amen. amen. Change what you're agreeing with. Yes. Titus chapter two, verse two, in the Amplified Bible, says this, urge the older men to be temperate, venerable, serious men, sensible, self-controlled, sound in the faith, in the love and in the steadfastness and patience of Christ. We need to know what the word says before the problem comes, don't we? I, I want to know, I want to know how to turn the water off before I spring a leak. I want to know how to get the power back on before the hurricane knocks all the power out. Let me encourage you to call Mike Thrift Electrical Services and get your generator hookup done today. Before, before the season is upon us, I want to encourage you to do that. Because I want to tell you, it's nice when the lights go out and you press a button and the lights come back on. Everybody's crying and sweating. It's hot. I have no hot water. I have no cold air. And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Get it done now. Amen. Be prepared now. You don't, you don't believe the devil's going to just leave you alone because you're nobody, right? You understand that he hates you. He hates it when you get up in the morning. He hates you when you walk out the door. He hates you when you go about your day and he wants the worst for you. I want to remind you this morning, be prepared before he ever, before he ever has an opportunity to snare you up or entrap you. Amen. If you know what to do before the situation comes up, you can remain patient and not have to ask God for patience because there's going to be tribulation attacked, attached to patience. We have to run, the Bible says, with patience, the race that's before us. Be prepared 
to be patient and keep going. Someone asked me, they said, how do you, how do you keep going when it seems like, you know, what you're praying for isn't manifested? Be patient. You know, I, I, I like saying it like this, brother, sometimes it takes a minute for it to manifest. Jesus had some, remember the lepers that came and they said, can you heal us? Can you tell you? He said, I will go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says that as they went, they were healed. Sometimes it takes a minute. Now, be prepared because the Bible says a day with the Lord is a thousand years. So a minute is a longer than 60 seconds sometimes. But I, but I want to remind you that God does not exist in time. His existence is outside of time. He is not limited by time. When we pray in faith, it's always now in the presence of the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. That right now when we pray, it's, it's, it's present tense faith. If we wait till tomorrow and pray in faith, it's going to be present tense faith. But as far as God is concerned, it's right now. Prepare yourself to remain steadfast in faith. Put your hand on your heart. Say, heart, you're designed to receive faith from the word of God and produce faith in this earth in Jesus' name. Now, if your heart started palpitating when you said that, it's because you've never talked to it that way before. I'll tell you, our heart is designed to, 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 to cultivate the Word of God. Amplified Bible, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore then, seeing as we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance and unnecessary weight and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. Isn't that, isn't that a revelation that before we can get in the race, we got to get light? You don't run the race that is set before you encumbered by things that are not absolutely necessary to the race that you're in. You don't, you don't see... You don't see marathon runners and triathlon athletes competing with backpacks on, right? They, have, they only have what they brought for the purpose of winning the race. I want to remind you, we cannot be tangled up with things that have no business in the life of the believer. We don't need 12 steps. We have, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is more than enough. It is power. It is from now until forever. It is for this moment. It is for this hour. We have no need for more. We have no need for less. It is everything for the believer to accomplish your purpose. Don't get caught up in the wrong thing. Don't get tangled up in the wrong stuff. Run with patient endurance. Steady, active, persistently. If your example of steady is determined or your example of steadiness is is, is exampled, made an example by every time something doesn't go your way, you begin a prayer of desperation. I want to tell you, you need to change that tonight. If every time you hear a bad report, you begin to draw back and retreat, tonight's the night you have to make a decision with this. I, I read a report before I came into church tonight, it went off on my news app on my phone, a notification. I picked it up and it said Dollar, tr dollar Tree and Family Dollar to close 1,000 stores. Dollar Tree and Family Dollar. And right away, people are taking that report and they're, re they're text, uh, tweeting it at, or, or whatever, what do you call it? It's all X now. They're Xing it out there, you know, whatever they're doing. Posting it out there. This is what's happening. This is what's going on in America. This is what the Democrats have done. This is what, oh, this is the Republicans fault. They, oh, they're blaming everybody. And it's just catastrophic because the, I don't even shop at Family Dollar. I don't, Dollar Tree, I don't go to the Dollar Tree. 
And the, and the people are chiming in. They say, oh, yeah, it's going to be bad. The poor are just going to suffer. It's going to be harder to be poor in America. Everyone echoes the bad report. And it's nothing new, is it? Because when Moses sent out 12 spies, 10 of them echoed the same report. Negative, too bad. It's gonna, they're going to overwhelm us. We're nothing in their sight. Everyone's saying the same thing. Oh, it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. I want to remind you that no matter what the land is that we live in, whether it's called the United States or the divided states, that we still serve a God that is in heaven. He lives on the inside of us. We are empowered to prosper and to be in health even as our soul prosper. I don't need the dollar store. If he has to rain manna from heaven and bring in quail from the east, he can supply our need. Amen. Amen. Determine we're going to go in faith and not look back. You work at the Dollar Tree, don't you? That's what Dollar General's hiring. You can just go right over. You got the resume. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's going to promote you to the $5 store. Amen. In Jesus name. Increase and multiplication is part of God's plan. Is this all right for Wednesday night? Say amen if you're all right tonight. Amen. Let me go a little further, okay? Verse two, look away from all the things that distract to Jesus. Put your eye in the right place. He is the leader and the source of our faith. You know how I know we can overcome whatever the devil's plan is to take us out? Because Jesus has already overcome every plan that the devil had to take him out. Let me remind you that Satan did not kill him. Satan and the devils were rejoicing at his death, but he said they did not have power to take my life, but I willingly lay it down. Paul said they were, Paul said had they known what they were doing, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Let me tell you, he's smarter than the devil. He's wiser than the enemy's plan. He's got, he's thinking 10 steps ahead of the 10 steps that the devil's thinking behind. He is over overflow when the devil is coming up empty. The devil digs a hole but we coast over it. Why? Because the Lord delivers us out of them all. Can you give him a good and mighty praise tonight if you believe it? Amen and amen. Woo. Now, he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him endured the cross, despised and ignored the shame. He is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trial so that you may not grow. Remember what I was just telling you about spiritual lazy? Remember what I was just telling you about weakness? Remember what I was telling you about getting tired and giving up? So that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart or relaxing and fainting in your mind. That's where it starts. When you begin to meditate on what the problem is today. Every day we get a new list of here's what you have to worry about today. Every day. And you know what I've noticed? Everything that I had to worry about yesterday, I survived it. Every time, you know how many times the economy has crashed in the last 54 years that I've been alive? I don't remember. A bunch of times. And yet, I not one time can remember ever missing a meal. Hallelujah. Do you know how many times it's, <clears throat> somebody's going to run this thing in there, the housing market falls. You know how many times I missed a meal? Zero times. You know how many times that the church is supposed to fall apart because people can't give and there's not going to be any result? You know how many times the church has failed? Zero times. There was a, what was it right after COVID? The monkey pox, remember that? Monkey pox was the thing that was coming out right after COVID. They're, they're like, be ready. It was, oh, and what are those beetles, not the beetles, the uh, Murder hornets. Remember that? Murder hornets are coming. Murder hornets and monkeypox. It's a bad combination. I bet if you got stung by the murder hornet, you'd look like you had the monkeypox. Then I found out how the monkeypox got transmitted. I said, I'm pretty safe from monkeypox. I'm going to be all right. I'm not worried about monkeypox. 
Murder hornets, now that's another thing, but I'm just saying. Something else to worry about. Now you don't even hear about murder hornets anymore. What they do, decide to go back to Japan or wherever they came from. What happened with the monkeypox? In 2014, there was a case of Ebola in Georgia, in South Georgia at that hospital there. And like live Ebola virus, you know, which li it liquefies your inside. And we didn't hear about that but for like five minutes. You've survived. Look at what you survived already. What are you going to do when tribulation comes? Stop saying what everybody else is saying and start declaring what you've already... Listen, I know what he's already brought me through. Do you understand there was this time when it looked like the world was going to collapse in upon us. In you'll, be, you'll be 100 telling your great grandkids about it. All the whole world was coming in against us. They were going to shut us all down. They were going to take over. They were going to ban you from getting uh, pork and beans at the grocery store. But somehow or another, it just evaporated. Why? Because the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. What are you going to do? I'm going to hide in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to hide behind the wall of His power. I'm going to declare His word in the land in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to say amen. Make it loud if you got that with you. I'm going to run the race till there's no more race to run. If you knew what was coming in 2025, you might not be saying amen. You'd be like, oh, but pastor, you know what? Listen, let me tell you, we win he cannot he cannot dominate the earth as long as the church is here because as long as the church is here the Holy Ghost is here as long as the y'all ain't saying anything as long as the Holy Ghost is here in the church all power all dominion and all authority is in the church say yes you ought to put your hand together and give the Lord a good praise right now. Woo. What are you going to do? We're going to overcome. What are you going to do? We're going to win. What are you going to do? I'm going to walk it out in faith. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give him another good praise if you got one in you. Amen. We discover our race and we look to Jesus as we run it. Say yes. How many of you know he's the author? Hallelujah. Come on. And the finisher. Amen. He, he had joy in his sacrifice because he knew that his sacrifice would deliver us from the power of the wicked one. Thank you, Lord. Let us lay aside every weight, every stress, every care, every concern, and every sin that holds us back tonight in Jesus' name outlast contradiction to the word outlast contradiction to the word when the when when the contradiction comes that you're not going to make it you outlast it by making it anyway <laughs> I gotta I gotta tell y'all something when I when COVID hit us COVID hit this uh, you know nation my grandfather and my grandmother, they were 90 at the time, almost 90, 89 at the time. <clears throat> Walk, walked into the hospital and the emergency room, they left them in the emergency room for six and a half hours. Two 90-year-old people, almost 90, left them in the emergency room for like six and a half hours. I got a phone call. And they said, listen, I can't stay here anymore with them. I, I, I need you to come down here. So I got in my car and I drove down there. And they were still there. So what's going on? They said, I haven't seen us yet. I said, you got to be kidding me. And so I walked and said, hey, listen, this COVID has got all you. I think my grandparents, they said they got, you know, uh, the doctor said they got some COVID or something. They got to get in here and get taken care of. You know, the local doctor sent them to the emergency room. And they went in there and they took, finally took them back there six and a half hours later and they're wearing masks and, and like the look like the, that movie Outbreak remember with Dustin Hoffman everybody was there you know the whole town was just it was chaos everybody 
And I'm, just, I'm walking around there. And they, I walk back there in the back. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not wearing any kind of plastic suit. And I walk, remember, you remember, I walk back there. And they're like, you know, you got to be covered. You're probably going to get this too. I said, I'm not, I'm not getting this. This is not. This was after all the foolishness, you know. I mean, and we, we, we left the hospital. After hearing the doctor say, there's nothing we can do. You're just going to have to go home and, and, you know, try to take care of yourself. I said, the most deadly thing in the world, you're not even going to give them, you know, Tylenol? I mean, nothing? They sent me home with this little, puts on the finger, measures oxygen. I don't know how you get oxygen out of your finger. But you put it on the finger, it measures your oxygen and your heart rate and, you know, something like that. But it, it does have like an oxygen level thing. And they said, if it ever gets below gets below 80 you got to get them back to the hospital so what are y'all going to do well we don't know but you got to get them back here you're not doing anything now for two weeks they said you remember they took quarantine them for two weeks for two weeks they stayed in that house three times a day i went over there i got their temperature i made sure they took some uh, uh vitamins i was giving them some uh you know making sure they have food, everything, making sure they ate, making sure they, you know, were taken care of for two weeks. The lady that from the hospital called me every day for two weeks. Are you looking after Yeah, I'm looking after them. What's their reason? I said, everything's good, same as it was. Are you wearing your mask and gloves when you go over there? I said, uh, I did tell them no story. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing all that. I didn't want to have to fight the CIA if they thought, found out I wasn't wearing a mask in my own house, you know, so. I never wore a mask, never wore the gloves, never, all, all that stuff. And all the while, I'm getting more and more angry. Because I'm literally seeing, we're praying, we're confessing. We're, you ask my wife, she'll tell you, she never got sick. Oh, yeah, it's bad. They went back to their doctor, went back to their doctor. And the doctor said, oh, yeah, they've got it again. I said, They've just had it. How can they have it again? Well, you know, I said, didn't y'all just give them the COVID shot? So they've had COVID. You give them the COVID immunity shot, and you tell me, yeah, that's what happened. I said, y'all don't know what you're doing. That's not how you make friends with doctors, by the way, because they're like, well, what do you know? I was like, I just know I'm not sick. That's what I know. I want to tell you. He will try to wear you down. I was getting more and more angry all the time because all it was was about how bad it was. And you remember how it changed here. And we just started declaring against it every week, every service. We began to declare that we're under the Psalm 91 covenant of protection. How we declared no pestilence will come near our house. The thousand fall at one end, 10,000 at the other, but it does not come here. I'm going to tell you, I've already walked through it and I've seen God is faithful. I've already walked through it and said, though he may yell loudly, he's not going to overcome us because the greater one living on the inside will cause us to prevail in Jesus' name. Don't give up. Stand strong. We're going to hear a contradiction. The battle is in your mind and it must be renewed with the word. When they tell you, well, this is just the way it's going to be, you have to accept it and you have to use wisdom. I want you to know there's no greater wisdom than the word of God. Can you say amen to that? I'm going to tell you, if the world, there is worldly wisdom and there is godly wisdom. And godly wisdom will prevail over worldly wisdom every time. I wish somebody would say amen to that. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46 says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things in which I say? I tell you, I don't want to be that one that calls him Lord, that calls him Master, and then doesn't do the things he asked me to do. I want to be the one that when I hear him do, when I hear him speak, I want to obey. Amen. Verse 47, For whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and doeth them, I will show you who he is like. Get ready. He's like a man that built a house and dig deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beats vehemently upon that house, it could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. What are you going to do when tribulation comes? I've got a house 
that's built on a firm foundation. What are you going to do when tribulation comes and storms arise? I'm not going to do anything differently. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on worshiping. I'm going to keep on praising. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on confessing. Why? Because my house is built on the rock. Is anybody with me in this place tonight? Stand with me on your feet if you can. Read the Word for the purpose. Read the Word for the purpose of getting the revelation of the voice behind the Word. Now, I want to show you something tonight, and I'm closing with this right now. I've asked you to stand. It's 7.59. I'm not going to preach past 10 o'clock tonight, I promise. David wrote this in the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. Can anybody make that confession tonight? The Lord is my shepherd. Can anybody make that wave at me or something? Let me know you're alive. I shall not want. Fear, fear tells you the need is greater than the supply. Fear comes in and tells you that the problem is greater than the solution. Fear, fear comes in and begins to tell you lack is on the way and you have to hold back and you have to withdraw. But I've, I'm reading this here and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. The Lord that lives in us has already overcome all the tribulation in this world. Can you say amen to that? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will feed me. He will guide me. And He will cause me to be shielded from the enemy. I'm going to declare something to you. No matter what the devil's thinking up for the next 12 months, there is a provider, there is a healer, there is a coverer, and there is a supply that is greater. Thank you, Lord. You are our great supply. Lift your hand up to heaven right now. Lord, I thank you that you are our great supply. I thank you, Lord, that you are our shield and our covering. I, I don't need a shield from a man. I don't need a covering from another man. I've got the greater one living on the inside of me. Come on, open your mouth and declare it out loud. The greater one is living in me. Therefore, I overcome. Come on by the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, and the word of my testimony in agreement with the word of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He refreshes me, amen. That means when I get dried out and tired out, there's refreshing by the still waters. Come on, somebody. He restores my soul. What does that mean? When my life is draining, He restores my life. Hallelujah. Far too long. Only time we read Psalm 23 is at a funeral when somebody's dead. I tell you, if we start reading it a little bit sooner than that, somebody might not die. The Lord, the Lord leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. He's not going to let his name fall to the ground. Can you say amen to that? He's not going to let his name be dragged through the months. But say amen to that. His name is not synonymous with lack. His name is synonymous with abundance. Can you say amen to that? His name is not synonymous with sickness. His name is synonymous with the supernatural, miracle-working power of health in Jesus' name. That's the kind of church this is. Just in case you were wondering how you ended up here tonight and what is going on around you, we're going to believe God for great. Say yes. Lift your hand in this direction. Let's pray to you. Father, every minute. Every person calling God, hungry, their hands are stretched out right now. Right this night. Lord, I pray that you would touch them with a fresh 
with a fresh outpouring of the oil of joy. Lord, pour over them tonight a fresh outpouring of faith. God, that will believe for greater than ever before. Somebody say amen to that. Lord, that your guidance by the word of the Lord will be a lamp to their feet. Yes, that when we hear the word, we take a step. That your word is a light to the pathway. We don't move until you call us to move. But when you say move, we move speedily in Jesus' name. Say amen to that. I want to declare over you tonight with your hand stretched in this direction, there is a table set before you. And even though your enemy is looking for your downfall, even though your enemy is looking for the place where you will stumble, the Bible says he's prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. They're not going to be invited to the table, but they're going to have to watch you eat the supernatural favor and blessing of the Lord. Come on, somebody, and say yes to that tonight. Your head is anointed. And your cup runs over. Lift up both hands now and say, thank you, Lord. I receive it in my life. Every bit, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. In Jesus' name, I'm going to stay in faith. Hallelujah. Give him a great and mighty praise here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. somebody close to you and tell them you're going to win. Tell them. Tell them you're going to win. You're not going to fail. Come on, tell them. Don't give up. Come on, tell them. Don't stop confessing the word. Tell them. Don't say what everybody else is saying. Say what God says. Amen. Come on. How many of you know the kingship and the kingdom belongs to the Lord? How many? That, that means you win. The greater one. Well, tonight before we leave, I want to ask the ushers to go to the back and prepare to receive the tithe and offering. Give me one more. Give me two more. Make sure you're all holding at least four buckets. We're going to need all four tonight. Whatever the Lord would speak to you about doing tonight, be ready to do that. Do it quickly and speedily. You are supporting a vision and a ministry that is going to believe God in the face of a compromised, lazy group. We're going to be a church that is on fire in Jesus' name. We're going to be a church that has revival every service in Jesus' name. We're going to be a church that walks and speaks faith every time in Jesus' name. I don't care what anybody else is doing. No 12 steps, one step. You step to the cross, he takes care of the rest. Amen. Father, tonight I pray that as we give in this offering tonight, that we give not one person begrudgingly or reluctantly, but that everyone give with joy. Father, if we don't give with joy, we recognize that our reward is, 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 is stalled, it is blocked. So, Father, tonight as we give, we give with a joyful heart. Somebody say yes to that. We give with love. Amen. Say yes to that. And we're excited to be a part of what you're doing in this last day. Pray that the anointing rests upon the giver for increase and multiplication, 30, 60, and 100 fold. And everybody that received it said amen. Give him a good and mighty praise. God bless you. Bring somebody to church with you Sunday morning. 9.30 corporate prayer is going to be awesome. We're going to be praying for everybody. And don't forget Saturday, 8 o'clock. We need you and everybody else to be here. Be blessed.